Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rachel and I am knitting. Not right now, but most of the time. And I have been knitting. You might notice that I'm wearing a beautiful sweater. This is my newly finished corn cardigan designed by Rebecca Klo of the Crayabea and I love it. I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, so what does that mean? That means that this video is the next installment of my series called FO Diaries or Finished Object Diaries, which is a series where I take you through the knitting process on my recently finished objects. I tell you things I like about the pattern, things I am not too fond of, um, hiccups I encountered along the making process, and whether or not I would recommend this pattern for you. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. But actually, before we really get into it, there's some things I, I, I want to address. Um, I am going to be looking at my project page in my knitting journal, the notes that I've taken. And I'm also going to be looking at um, my notes and the pattern side by side on my iPad. So if I'm not looking at you, I'm looking down here at some very important literature regarding what we're going to talk about today in this video. So that is the first point of order that I want to address. The second point of order is I'm kind of nervous. I'm kind of nervous to make this video because I don't have a uh, like a glowing review of this pattern. I hit a lot of significant obstacles, or at least they really felt significant at the time. And I don't know, it makes me feel crummy to say that because I'll just, I'll just say it. I'll just tell you. I have a friend crush on Rebecca Klo. I do. And you know, I, I have a parasocial relationship or aspiration or whatever okay it happens to the best of us basically I follow her on Instagram I want her to follow me back and be my friend and like I don't know she just seems awesome I want to be friends with her so for me to uh uh have anything but a five-star review makes me uh I don't know nervous but I mean these are the facts this is my experience in knitting this pattern this is not to say that I think it's a bad pattern or a poorly written pattern more that it's to say I had issues with knitting the pattern that I think would be easily solved with a few changes to the written instructions a few additions a few tweaks so this again is just my experience with this pattern yours may be totally different maybe it will be smooth sailing for you it wasn't really smooth sailing for me at certain points so if you plan to knit this pattern which I do think you should if you like the look of this pattern uh these are good things to be aware of before you cast on Okay, so with that said, let's get into the logistics of this pattern. This is an all over lace pattern, knit flat, uh, and in one piece. No, not in one piece. Well, kind of in one piece. Basically, you cast on at the bottom, you knit up to the armpits, and then you separate the front left panel, the front right panel, and the back panels, and then you join them at the shoulder, you pick up the sleeves and knit them in the round. Okay, so it's it's not one piece, but uh, it's not seamed. There's no seaming required aside from the three needle bind off or your bind off of choice to connect um, at the shoulder. Okay, so there you go. Um, now, focus, Rachel, back on logistics of the pattern. This pattern comes in 10 sizes and it's size inclusive. It ranges from a 34 inch bust to a 64 inch bust. And there's a positive ease recommendation of three quarters inches to three and a half inches. So if you subtract the maximum ease, three and a half inches from the maximum bust size, 64 inches, that means that this garment is designed to fit anyone who has up to a 60 and a half inch bust. Um, so, you know, the topic of size inclusivity, I think is a little ambiguous. Some people have hard and fast rules that it's at 60 inches. Some people have hard and fast rules that it's at 59 inches. I've even seen some people have hard and fast rules that it's beyond that more in the realm of 70 inches. Um, but I think that this is fair to call size inclusive and, uh, that is something to be happy about. Uh, it's written to be knit on size four millimeter needles. For the ribbing 
and size five millimeters for the body. It's also modifiable. I'm not sighing because of the pattern. I just, I don't know. I needed oxygen or something. Um, so yeah. Okay. So it's modifiable. You can choose between a rounded neck or a V-neck. I chose the v-neck option and you can also choose between long sleeve or short sleeves and i'll give you one get one guess i almost said one glass i don't know what that is i'll give you one guess what sleeve option i picked okay obviously it's the short sleeve that's what i did i did v-neck short sleeve and uh no offense but it's perfect this is so cute and beautiful and yes i do think it was worth all the heartache and the frustration that i encountered during the knitting process it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. I also think, no offense 2.0, that this is the perfect yarn pairing for it. If you've ever made a corn cardigan and you didn't use this yarn, or if you've ever had in bloom yarn from Treehouse Knits and you didn't make this pattern, uh, you messed up somewhere along the way because these, this is a match made in heaven. Match made in heaven. Okay, um, I should say now that we're on the topic of yarn, I knit this in Treehouse Yarn uh, Treehouse Knits yarn on the Redwood Worsted Base in the colorway In Bloom. This is a colorway that was released for the Favorites collection. I think, at, at least at the time of filming, there's still some skeins of this colorway available on their website from Favorites Collection Overflow. I don't know if there are sweater quantities, but um, you can snag some uh, skeins of In Bloom if they're still available. Go check the website. My affiliate link is in the video description. All right, so I used I used that, and uh, you may be happy to know I only used three hundred and sixty six grams of worsted weight to make this. So if you're a plus size knitter, you might consider making the corn cardigan because a little bit of yarn goes a long way. I didn't meet gauge though, so I guess that's what I should talk to you about next. Uh, if you're conceptualizing how much yarn to purchase to buy it, I don't necessarily think you should go based on uh, my figures. So I made the size six and um, it's kind of an interesting situation as to why I made the size six. So last summer, Lauren from Treehouse Knits was incredibly generous with me and sent me a ton of yarn, many, many skeins of yarn, including a sweater quantity of In Bloom. In fact, I still have four skeins left of In Bloom. So I really, I could make another one of these no problem and still have some yarn left over, almost a full skein's worth left over. Um, but I'm getting, I'm getting sidetracked here. So Lauren sent me this yarn. Originally, I was going to make what's it called? The, uh, the love note? No, not the love note. I don't think I'll ever make the love note, um, for reasons that are on my own. Um, the lovable sweater. I was originally going to make the lovable sweater and I swatched for it, but it just wasn't the right fit. Uh, the lovable sweater calls for Aran weight yarn and this is worsted weight yarn and I got the two confused in my head and it, so it just wasn't the right fit. So then I swatched for the corn cardigan. I thought this would be a perfect um, solution to the problem of my plans changing and no longer moving forward with the lovable sweater. And I was right. This swatch was so precious, so delicate, so just like springtime, cheerful, fun. Uh, the, the simple lace pattern paired with this really beautiful, soft, lilac-y, pinky. Uh, there's like cream sections, light blue sections. This is kind of like, it reminds me of um, a hydrangea bud or um, like a hydrangea blossom. You know, it's like clusters of petals. Um, it kind of looks like that to me in yarn form. So I was really happy with that pairing, this yarn with that pattern. Um, and I swatched on five millimeter needles, which is what the pattern calls for, for the main body. And I got um, 18 stitches over four inches when the pattern calls for 14 stitches over four inches. So I'll tell you that, uh, I don't really know how I figured 
this out or why I made this decision, but I figured, okay, so if I have 18 stitches over four inches and the gauge is 14 stitches over four inches, if I go up two needle sizes, that will probably be what I need to do. So I didn't swatch a second time, I just cast on. So I used five millimeter, five millimeter needles for the ribbing and seven millimeter needles. No, I didn't. <gasps> what did I do? Oh my gosh. You know what I think I did? So I really messed up gauge and I thought that I had it all figured out, but really I went in the wrong direction because when I swatched on eight millimeter needles, I my gauge was too big because I had more stitch. Oh, no. If I swatched on eights and I had 18 stitches. Okay, I got confused a second time, but now I'm back on track. I swatched with five millimeter needles, which is a US size eight. Okay, I'm tracking with the facts. I got 18 stitches over four inches. That means my stitches were too big and I had more of them inside that four inch parameter than the pattern calls for. The pattern wants you to only have 14 stitches in that four inch parameter. So I figured if I went down a needle size, that would solve the problem. I think initially I thought I was going down two needle sizes, but really I just went down one needle size because I knit this, uh, the body on US size seven, which is 4.5 millimeter. And I knit the ribbing on US five, which is 3.75 millimeter. So ugh, numbers are hard. Okay. So yeah, what a mess. I just blew my own mind. Okay. So, so I thought I had gone down two needle sizes, but now I'm realizing I really only went down one needle size and that's totally fine. I made size six, which is supposed to be a 54.25 inch bust. And that would have given me the three, the maximum ease, the three and a half inch ease. Um, but actually this finished item has a 48 inch bust. So my gauge was, was at least my stitch gauge, my row gauge, I think was, was nearly perfect, but my stitch gauge obviously, um, was its own beast. And, uh, it still fits great. I'm learning more and more that I like negative ease or I don't really know what my body is doing or how bodies work, I guess, or furthermore, how tape measures work because this is uh, 20, 20 or no, this was 24 inches measured flat. So that means it's a 48 inch circumference, right? Well, I have a 50 to 53 inch bust depending on you know, the way the wind's blowing. And like this, this doesn't look like negative ease, right? So I don't really know what in the world's going on, but this is a 48 inch bust and uh, I, it looks fine. It's, it's easy, breezy, beautiful, uh, etc. So whatever. I don't know. Maybe someone can t like make a tutorial on how to use a tape measure because clearly I'm doing something wrong. <sighs> but that's neither here nor there. I made size six. Size six is meant to fit uh, or have a finished chest circumference, like I said, 54 and a quarter inch, uh, but this is actually 48 inches and I'm perfectly happy with it. Okay, uh, now let's get into uh, the nitty gritty of the obstacles that I uh, faced while knitting this. And I must say that I want to acknowledge that my credibility is shot now because I don't even know how to how to count apparently and I don't even know which needles are which. So I will say, you know, take everything that I guess I say ever with a grain of salt. Uh, but this is still my lived experience knitting this pattern. Okay, so here are my thoughts. The first thought I have of things that I wish were a little different in the written instructions of this pattern is a quick fix, or at least I think it's a quick fix. I don't really know. I'm not a pattern designer, uh, but in theory, it's a quick fix, and that is adding a schematic. There is not a schematic in this pattern. Um, if you're not familiar, schematic refers to 
basically an icon that signifies the garment or the accessory you're making. So for a sweater, it would be an image of a sweater. Some people have drawings, some people have like clip art type images, and then it basically has um, the sections measured out. So it would have uh, an image of the shape of the sweater and it would have a line that says, you know, from the sleeve separation to the hem, it should be X, Y, Z inches. For the sleeves, it should be this inch, this amount of inches. From the V-neck decreases to the shoulder, it should be this inches, this many inches. The back panel should be this many inches, etc., etc. I think adding a schematic would be so helpful. It would have been so appreciated um, when I was knitting this to help me visualize uh, how far I should keep knitting. Of course, these measurements are included in the written instructions, but the schematic really brings a pattern to the next level and really helps uh, makers visualize what in the world they're doing. So I think a schematic would really, really have elevated my knitting experience on this pattern. The second item that I took note of when I was working on this is that I really wish there were more instructions or a visual, like a chart for the V-neck decreases. The instructions in the pattern, um, it's a paid for pattern, so I don't, I don't wanna, you know, give it away because uh, Rebecca should be paid for her very good work. But uh, the, basically, if you can't do the lace repeat, don't do it and just knit those stitches. Um, but it's hard to know if you can do that lace repeat ahead of time until you're at the end of the row and you're like, oh, I ran out of stitches. And even though I was able to, you know, get the hang of this lace repeat, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a four row repeat. I could look at my fabric and know what row I was on and know what my next stitch or stitches should be. I still had a lot of trouble. I had to tink back a lot. I had to frog a lot. And if you've ever done either of those things on lace fabric, you know it is a pain in the neck. Um, even though this is a simple lace fabric, it's incredibly, incredibly annoying to do. And, and I had to do it a lot. So I think that just like a quick chart or uh, just a little bit more detail on those instructions would really, really have been helpful and would have benefited my knitting experience for these V-neck decreases. Now, if you're doing the round neck option, I don't think there are decreases, but I'm not sure because I, I didn't knit that version. So that wouldn't be something you would need to worry about. But if you are knitting the V-neck, uh, keep that in mind. I tried to uh, write out basically which decrease uh, needed the lace repeat and which decrease didn't. So at least I could share that information for my size to help you out. But uh, that was too much for my brain. Like I can read my fabric, I can read my knitting, but uh, this side of the cardigan is not like the perfect mirror image of this side. Um, and I honestly, I don't know if that is because of me and my like frustration and mixing up when I was on the decreases or if that's just how the cookie crumbles uh, between these two front panels. Um, but yeah, I think more information and visual aid for the decrease would have been so helpful, invaluable actually. And um, this also applies to the decreases when you are on the back panel. You cast off the center stitches for your neck and you decrease along the side of it. And again, it was hard to know which rows I would do the lace repeat and which rows I wouldn't due to the decrease changing the amount of stitches. Um, so I really, really would have appreciated a chart. That would have been super helpful. I'm sensing a theme here is that maybe I'm a visual learner and this pattern was not super friendly for visual learners. And that might be something to keep in mind. If you're a visual learner, uh, uh, you might want to go slow and steady on this pattern and maybe put in some lifelines and be prepared to frog. Um, maybe the pattern will be updated with more visuals. That would be so awesome. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. My next uh, 
note is on the v-neck decreases both sides are written as knit two togethers so i modified i think this side the front left to be slip slip knit so the decreases would slant this way instead of this way so both sides the decreases will slant outward towards my shoulders instead of one slanting outward and the other also slanting this way i think this is just a cleaner look to have them both uh, have the stitches oriented so the angle is like whoosh you know yeah so that's a modification i did and uh oh yeah my last note is when it got time to cast off for the sleeve stitches meaning i had finished knitting the body maybe this is my clue that there's negative ease but it's fine um i'm considering adding more buttons but I don't have buttonholes, but you know, I just don't like that gape. Makes me feel, I don't know. I don't know. There's probably some diet culture trauma related to that, but looks fine with that little front tuck. Okay, focus, Rachel. So you cast on from the hem, you knit up to here, and then you um, cast off sleeve stitches and you start working the panels in separate pieces. So when you go to cast off the, the sleeve stitches, I think that it would have been helpful to have just a little bit more instruction. Are you casting off these sleeve stitches knit wise? Are you casting them off in the lace pattern? Um, this is something that may seem obvious, but it wasn't to me. And it took me more time than I wanted to spend figuring out how to cast this off. I tried to cast off in the lace pattern and like that can't be how it should be because it, it just didn't work. So uh, it would have been nice to see that in the pattern cast off knit wise rather than having to attempt it in the lace pattern and then realize, oh no, duh, it's knit wise. So just a simple addition of cast off knit wise instead of just cast off, that would have been helpful um yeah those are all my notes for the corn cardigan let's see yeah those are all my notes i think that um it's not as scary now that i've said all those things really only a couple couple notes um that i would uh i would note that i wish were different um another thing that i modified without meaning to when I was making this pattern is I picked these uh, button band stitches up in size four and I knit them in size four. Didn't mean to, didn't realize till after. So I guess this cardigan is just the tale of uh, wrong needle sizes, but hey, it fits, it looks good, it's comfortable, I like it. Can't you just like imagine wearing this to Easter brunch or something? perfect and I love it uh but I love it in spite of some uh unenjoyable parts of the knitting process I think also that I'm learning more and more with everything I make as may also be true of you uh things that I really enjoy and appreciate in patterns and things that maybe are not big deals to other people but to me as i'm making the piece or reading the pattern or you know engaging in that activity they seem i don't know they seem really blown out of proportion in the moment and i do stand by these uh these items that i have feedback on i think that they are important additions i think it's an important part of pattern um, accessibility to have these visual uh, cues um but still even after all that i'm really happy with the finished result i think i'll get a lot of wear out of this i want to wear it in ireland but it might be a little too um like light and airy so We'll see. I, I know that I'll get a lot of wear out of it in my life as a um, teacher, so that will be awesome. And I'm excited to wear this out in the world. Uh, but yes, I do want to tell you, I don't think that this is beginner friendly. So, uh, and it doesn't claim to be either. So, so 
I'm not saying like there's been any dishonesty or anything. Um, that certainly hasn't happened. But if you're a beginner and you're wanting to try a cardigan, I would not start with this simply for the reasons I've outlined with the confusion over decreasing, the lack of schematic, um, and just like those little spots here and there that just need a little bit more clarification to really bring this pattern to the next level. Those are my thoughts. Um, but yeah, I would knit this again and I feel empowered by the knowledge I've gained over this first experience knitting it. Uh, maybe I'll actually knit it with the size needle that I think I'm knitting it with on the second time around. Also, I'm really encouraged by the fact that this only took four skeins of worsted weight yarn and uh, it's out of reach, but I still have over 30 grams left of the original skein or the last skein of the original four I used for this. Um, I still have four skeins on my yarn wall. Um, I asked Lauren from Treehouse Knits, what would you like me to do with these extra four skeins? Because, you know, I had you send me eight because I originally was going to make the lovable sweater. That didn't happen. And now I have so much left over. Um, I thought maybe she might say, send it back. I thought she might say, here's a pattern I'd love to see it knit up in. And she was so sweet. And she said, you know, it's a gift. Do whatever you want with it. And I don't know. I just love Lauren. She's the best. She's so nice. So I'm going to find something to make with those remaining four skeins of in bloom, maybe a hat. Oh, you know, it would be fun if I made a hat for me and a hat for Jane, because Jane, um, I'm pretty sure Jane is going to be our tour guide again uh, on the Irish knitting tour. So uh, if you watch my Irish knitting tour recap videos and you, like me, are enamored with Jane, uh, come on this year's trip and you'll get to meet her. How cute would that be to, to have matching hats with Jane? She probably thinks I'm nuts, but she can't get rid of me now. It's, it's too bad. So sad, Jane. So maybe I'll do that. Uh, maybe I'll make, I could make another corn cardigan in a smaller size um, for a loved one. I don't know. I'll have to think on it and uh, figure out what I want to do. Because four skeins of worsted weight, great for a corn cardigan, but uh, for my size, the garment options are not really extensive. Could save it for color work, uh, for stripes. I don't know. I'll just let it sit for now and keep my options open. Uh, but yeah, I just want to say again, this video makes me nervous because I want to say knitting this was the joy of my life. I want to say that this was like every stitch was a delight and it just wasn't. It just wasn't. Uh, but again, I, I really am really happy that I knit it. I'm happy that I have it in my wardrobe. It's going to get a ton of use. Uh, but if you're planning to knit this, go in knowingly. And I hope that these tips are helpful for you. Um, but that's all I have for this video. <sighs> Look at this. This is absurd. Purple everywhere. Uh, but that's all I have for this video. And, uh... Yeah, if you've knit the corn cardigan and you have thoughts, let me know in the comments. If you want to knit the corn cardigan and you have questions, also let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them or help you through that process based on my knowledge from my experience knitting this. Um, but yes, I recommend the pattern, but with some caveats, go knowingly and go prepared to put some lifelines in and be ready to frog if it comes down to it. It came down to it for me a lot. And I've been knitting a long time, okay? I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but um, I'm also not trying to disparage myself. Like, I'm a smart, strong, capable knitter, and this happened when I was knitting it. So if you're a beginner, beginner knitter, uh, just keep it in mind. Okay, and Rebecca, if you're watching, I think you're amazing. And I'm unworthy to share the same air as you. Okay, so that's all. And uh, I'm just going to end it here because otherwise I will continue to embarrass myself. And that's enough for today. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you don't already. And hit that notification bell to be notified of my next upload. Last but not least, head over to Instagram and follow me at Rachel is Knitting if you don't already. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.